These are, in many ways, amazing materials. They are cheap to produce and present unrivaled functional properties, making them the go-to material for many different applications and consumer goods. However, the problem with plastics is that their production has increased 20-fold in the last half century, going from 15 million tons in 1964 to 311 million tons in 2014. And this number is expected to double again over the next 20 years. As things stand right now, a lot of this plastic ends up as trash, and only 9% of plastic trash is being recycled. The rest of it is sent to landfills, incinerators, or ends up as litter in the natural environment. It's about time that we rethink the plastic economy. In this session, you're going to hear two changemakers from the Boston area. In the first part, Amy Perlmutter will discuss how cities working to become zero waste can address the challenge of plastic waste. And in the second part, you're going to hear an entrepreneur, Ravish Maditya, who saw a business opportunity in helping businesses design plastic packaging for better recyclability. Please meet Amy and Ravish. Hi, my name is Amy Perlmutter and I'm a consultant in Cambridge, Massachusetts and my practice involves stakeholder engagement and strategy and project management all around um, green technology. So uh, zero waste and green chemistry are the two areas that I work in. And my passion is trying to create partnerships and create, uh, encourage enterprises um, that make the world a better place so that reduce our footprint on the planet. So I've worked, um, part of my career, I worked in what's called recycling market development, which is uh, working with manufacturers and researchers and communities to look at ways that manufacturers can incorporate recycled feedstock into their new products. And what I've been seeing a lot of um, that kind of frustrates me is what I think is a misunderstanding about circular economy. And that that kind of market development work is what circular economy is, when in fact, um, that's really kind of end of pipe, working with the, to incorporate recycled um, feedstocks. It's taking stuff that's already gone through the consumer cycle and has been discarded in recycling bins and putting it in, when circular economy to me is really focused more on prevention. So it's how to, it starts at the design phase, it starts with the manufacturers, and how do we design products in a way that can be less wasteful and then um, once that's done, then we look at how it flows through the economy and can be put back into the product. So what is a zero waste city? And to me, a zero waste city is one where everybody is aware of the goal to reduce their waste, to create less waste, and to make sure that um, whatever stuff they do have to discard is recyclable. So it's infused everywhere, it's everywhere you go. There are you know, policies and programs in place that can support those activities, but there's an underlying fundamental awareness of the concepts of zero waste and thinking about consumption and looking at ways um, and providing opportunities to reduce consumption and to make sure that what is left over is um, you know, is reused, repaired, and recycled. So one of the challenges that zero waste cities are facing is the, the what to do about plastics. There's a huge increase in plastics and, and they become so cheap that we just, we take these, um, we take these products that, you know, come from fossil fuels and we use them for all of a couple of seconds and we think nothing about throwing them away. And I feel, I fear that this is going to get even worse because new, uh, with cheap natural gas, new plastics capacity is coming online and uh, the number I've heard is that the, there's going to be a 50% increase in capacity to make new plastics over the next 10 years. So what are those plastics being used for? You know, are they for durable goods? Are they for disposable goods? And how can cities really look at sort of stemming that tide before it happens rather than dealing with them all after they become litter and waste and clog our landfills and our seas? <music> So 
So what can cities do to eliminate the plastic waste or re reduce the plastic waste? And I think that there's a lot of things um, that are going on. I mean, we're seeing plastic bag bans all around the country, and I know bans on straws and other single-use plastics, and I think that those are important. Um, I think we need to look at, you know, just again, to be thinking about materials. We don't think enough about materials and look at how we can, um, how we, we can create carrots and sticks to, 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 to change things. And I think we have to bring the public along in this and make them understand the impacts of these things. And we really need to be thinking about creating a cleaner plastic stream for recycling as well. Um, you know, and because again, with this cheap natural gas and plastics, virgin plastics being so cheap, it's harder now for recycled plastics to, to compete unless they're really clean. Uh, I think cities can engage industry and say, hey, you need to do more to take responsibility for the products that you're making us uh, manage that you create and um, create some of those partnerships. I think cities can look at working regionally um, and even nationally with other cities because one city alone might not be able to make a difference, but if you create a, a lot of them uh, together, they can make a difference. Um, so, yeah, so purchasing products with recycled content, requiring that they are high recycled content is important. Um, looking at leasing products so that the company who you get them from is responsible for taking them back. I think there are a lot of models out there and um, and we can be sort of continuing to look at, at what the best practices are. Uh, you know, Europe is looking to ban a whole bunch of plastics that aren't recyclable or compo compostable. And um, I, I believe that those are the kinds of things that, that cities can do that can make a difference. <music>
China saying, you know, we're not going to do this anymore is a really good thing. And I think it gives um, cities an opportunity to look at creating local markets and um, or regional markets. And so how can we create, um, how can we contract with our garbage haulers and our processing facilities so that we are, they're cleaning, they're collecting things in a way that keeps them clean. They're processing them in a way that really makes them high grade and usable for markets. And then we can use our economic, work with our economic development offices to try to attract businesses to the city that can utilize these materials or work regionally and attract them and use it. And I think, you know, if we can get even small scale businesses and they don't have to be a big glass plant, they can be maybe somebody who makes glass tiles or some other product out of glass. And same thing, we don't necessarily need a big paper mill, but are there other uses of paper where we can think differently um, and, and really attract some small businesses and then use our contracting power for the curbside recyclable materials to move those materials that are collected in the community to the new businesses that we have and keep that, that materials flow within the community. This is something that I'm really passionate about is, is creating, these, um, creating these partnerships and bringing in as many people as possible because to make a zero waste city, it has to be infused everywhere. It's, you know, you know, it's not just about recycling, it's about changing mindsets, it's about changing the culture and you do that by engaging everybody you can. And so you know, I mentioned um, it, there should be an economic development strategy as part of zero waste. I think that's really key. But I also think that if there are universities nearby to engage university researchers in this, whether it's looking at um, behavior change, whether it's looking at sort of the technical sides of what are some of the things that you can do with some of the waste materials that are in the city, what are some of the new products that you can create, whether it's civil engineers who might try using some of those products um, in new applications. I mean, it's, it's really endless. And um, you know, what are, if you've got community groups that might work on job training or helping immigrants or you know, people with disabilities, you know, what are the ways that you can bring them in to create small enterprises? And again, we don't need to have these big enter businesses that use everything. What are some of the small enterprises? Could they be making you know, rugs out of old rags and, and you know, discarded textiles? Could they be making um, handmade paper products that could be sold in a local store? So really thinking you know, kind of small is beautiful, that, that could work too. So I think you know, government businesses, if they're manufacturers there, again, how can they incorporate the recycled materials? Can they make products that you could use. I think um, you know, the LEED program here in the States I think creates a lot of opportunity because if you um, use uh, material in your buildings that was manufactured with recycled content and made within a certain number of miles of where the building is, um, you get points for that. So how can we tie that into LEED? So I think it's this constant thinking about um, who can we engage? How can we get the message out? How can we raise awareness? And what are the kinds of partnerships we can put together with the public sector, the private sector, uh, the nonprofit sector, and the academic sector? So my closing message would be that I think we can't wait for government to tell us what to do and that we need to take responsibility for the materials that we generate, the waste that we create, and also think about that we're on a planet with finite resources. And what is our environmental footprint on this planet? And where do things come from? And where do they go? And you know, one of the things I think a lot about is, uh, is cell phones and that we're always upgrading our phones whether we need them or not. And you know, being aware of where the minerals that are in that phone come from and what's, what the impact is on the habitats where those come from and on the, the labor that's creating those things. And so looking at from, you know, I always talk about where things come from and where they go. And so how do we be more aware of, uh, from extraction, the impacts that we're having on the planet with extraction, 
through you know the way that we use them the the and then where do they go afterwards are they burned in an in a incinerator in an environmental justice community or sent to a landfill that's not you know that's leaking or gonna leak in the future and we just we need to just consume less and be aware of it and take responsibility and we need to tell government and we need to tell businesses what it is that we want what are the products that we want we, we need to be the leaders and not wait for them to take action Hey, my name is Ravish Majitia and I'm the founder and CEO of Magnomer. We at Magnomer are trying to solve the problem of bottle recyclability. Did you know that in the US, less than 2% of all bottles collected are recycled back to bottles? The problem is the label itself. Labels are made of a different polymer type and need to be separated during the recycle process. We at Magnomer have a design to recycle. At Magnomer, we have designed a magnetic coating which can be directly printed onto the bottle label. Our coating means that recyclers can now magnetically attract the label away from the bottle, leaving behind higher quality plastic and lower contamination. At Magnomer, we are on a mission to make recycling attractive. So let me show you how this technology works. Our magnetic coatings can be directly printed onto shrink sleeve labels using existing printing processes. Bottle manufacturing itself sees no changes. Bottles are typically shred into flakes during the recycle process. It is in this flake form where Magnomer's magnetic coatings enable sortation and separation away leading to lower contamination. As you can see in this demo, a magnetic pulley pulls away the blue coated label flake, leaving behind higher quality, clear PET flake, which can now be melted back into bottles. The ability to sort the labels away from the bottle in the recycle process imparts recyclability to the entire bottle packaging. But that's not where our value proposition ends. Our magnetic coatings complement manufacturing every step of the way. At, the, at manufacturing, our magnetic coatings can be used with current printing processes. And equally true for recyclers, magnetic separation equipment such as magnetic pulleys and overband magnets are something that they already currently use. A question that comes up often is how much do our magnetic coatings cost? Now, imagine a bottle with a label having three different colors on it, red, blue, and green. Our magnetic coatings are cost equivalent to adding a fourth, say a white color onto the bottle label and printing process. Also, our coatings don't need to be of any specific color, like the one blue showed in the video earlier. They can be of a different color or they can be transparent to the human eye, not uh, affecting brand artwork or impacting any brand design. Our coatings importantly meet food safety regulations which are needed by the US FDA and similar European agencies. At Magnomer, we are on a mission to design to recycle and we are looking to partner with consumer brands, bottle manufacturers and packaging manufacturers in general who look at recyclability as a critical feature in their packaging design. Magnomer is a startup with a big mission. Our biggest roadblock is working with major Fortune 500 companies who are looking at sustainability and are looking at innovations in this space. We are trying to make ourselves visible and make ourselves heard and provide a solution for major consumer brands who see sustainability in packaging as their focus.
At Magnomer, the impact we hope to have is to increase the amount of recycled plastic in our supply chain. In the US alone, we can increase the amount of recycled plastic used in bottle packaging by 500,000 tons. That is equivalent to one and a quarter million tons of CO2 each year. To put that number in perspective, that is about a quarter of a billion cars taken off US roads every year or about 70,000 dump trucks worth of garbage that will be recycled instead of going to landfills. So you can find out more about us on magnomer.com. Thanks for listening.